How about a game of Zork on ESP32 using PST keyboard and a 14 inch VGA screen? For those of you who never played Zork, it's a text based quest. Came out in the early 80s, there is no graphics and you type in your commands. It used Z machine instructions as the game data, therefore allowing any machine with a Z interpreter to play. This project actually started nine years ago when I came across this post on the Arduino forum. The user Lewis Davis did an amazing work of taking in an existing Z interpreter and make it work on an Arduino Mega with SD card. The thing was that you had to connect it to your computer and play over the serial monitor, so I made several attempts to make a standalone unit. Adding PS2 keyboard was easy, but finding a proper output and get it all work together was too complicated and I just stopped trying at some point. Fast forward to a few weeks back, I came across another amazing work, which is the FabGL library for the ESP32, allowing you to basically turn the ESP32 into a small computer with SD, PS2 mouse and keyboard, sound engine and a cherry on top VGA output. Getting the Space Invaders example working on a VGA screen with sound was surprisingly simple and definitely it was fun playing. Now all that retro brought Zork back to my mind and then it clicked, I can finally get that project I was dreaming of to work. I forked the original project and spent two days in finding the right combination of libraries and settings to get the code to compile and work, if you want to try it out I will leave a link in the description. The next step which forced me to make more adjustment was to make it work on the ESP32. Now since I have made several attempts in the past, some of the code adjustments were ready for me, just had to copy them from the old projects I kept, lucky me. I was thrilled when I first got to play it on the new setup. Now let's go over the setup. I took a VGA cable cut off one end and wired it up to a breadboard friendly connector. I used these schematics to figure out the pinout. I used the 8 color setup with one pin for each color connected via 270 ohm resistor. I used PS2 with Arduino in the past, so I had a pair of female connectors with pin breakout ready. I used a logic level converter since the PS2 is a 5V and the ESP32 is 3.3V and added 1K pull ups on the 3.3V side. You can use the schematics on this side to help you with the PS2 connectors pinout. The SD card is connected to the SPI bus. And last and not least is the sound, which here I used a cut cable for. You can use this schematic to set it up. When it comes to the code, I took the original AZIP and added the FabGL on top of it. I do want to point out a few things. The SD config. Without this, I could not get the code running. But with other SD or breakout, this might have to be adjusted. I adjusted the VGA pinout to three, the two SPI pins for the SD that the original setup was using and this is my pinout. The PST mouse and the keyboards are left on their original pinout. The process from SD takes care of the output. I added a limit of 71 characters per line, ignore the few characters that exist in the system reply like when you type something that the system did not recognize. The process prompt line is responsible of the input from the keyboard. I had to add some logic to process all the possible keys. For example, I ignore scroll lock and tab as you can see here. All the special keys start with escape. Some have square brackets right after, like the error keys, and some have other special keys, like the F keys. I use the up arrow key to allow you to get the last line typed, make life easier when you play. And here you can see the implementation of the backspace. The next big thing I did in the code was to allow to choose a file from a list. I changed the original game that file to its proper name and downloaded two more Zork games. The get file name will return the name and length of the file 
and true as its value if the file is not a folder and it's not the memory game file. This was used in both the list of the files and then to get the right selected file to open the game. The code is available on Git and I would love to get the feedback from you guys. There are a few more things I would like to add and I will probably make a proper board for it, so stay tuned for updates. Hope you enjoyed this video, if you haven't done it by now, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up or leave a comment and see you next time.